everyone. Welcome to another episode of Johnny Vlogs. Today's episode brought to you by new Patreon supporter, Al. Al, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your help keeping me here, doing what I love doing. I'd want to give a huge thank you and quick shout out also to all my other patrons out there. Thank you guys so much, as well as just my regular YouTube viewers. As long as uh, you're watching, you're helping. So thank you so much. I really love doing this. Feels good to be back. I'm telling you, I've got this new energy after this break that I took, and I'm just really, really happy that I, I did that. Um, so speaking of new energy, this one, um, this Johnny Vlogs, I think is going to be a little bit different. I saw a video today that really, really struck me. And when you hear the topic, I think you're going to be interested in it. This video is called The Free Press, How a War on Truth Threatens Democracy. Sounds uh, very important to me. And it is posted by a YouTube uh, channel called Big Think. And you might know them. Um, they're pretty big, over a million and a half subscribers. Uh, I personally started uh, following them and subscribed to them when I saw some Bill Nye videos that they had posted. They have this really cool series where you can ask Bill Nye the Science Guy uh, questions and he'll answer them in a YouTube friendly format, kind of something like this, you know, just him in a camera. Um, I really, really dig that series. but. And I had seen a, a few different types of content coming out through Big Think. Most of it I really enjoyed. Um, and this video, for some reason, I don't know, it kind of struck a nerve with me and moved me to do all this. So the person that is speaking in it, his name is Wesley Lowry. And Big Think, the website at bigthink.com, they also made this their front page story for today. Um, it's interesting because the title that they have on the front page story is a bit different. Shooting the Messenger, Why the Media Can No Longer Safeguard Democracy. Which I think is um, a statement that I would probably concur with. I think I agree with that. Um, you know, look, I deal with a lot of cases where that is what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the truth. And as a matter of fact, I think many of you are following me because you know that I am struggling to do that. And in trying to do that, I review a lot of media, both mainstream media and a little bit off the radar. And in doing that, I have come to a conclusion that there are many issues, there are many problems with how this is currently working. Um, the biggest one, I think, is mainstream media sources will simply parrot each other's stories. They will copy facts from each other, and that kind of spins it up into um, a bigger item than it might truly be. Uh, there's been some cases I've looked into where things have just been blatantly wrong, but because this big media source covered it, all of a sudden these five other ones covered it the same way. Um, that's a problem. And where I really feel like there is a missing piece in all of this. Um, I don't know if you guys have watched it, but there is a documentary on Netflix about the Amanda Knox case. I think it's called Amanda Knox, if I remember correctly. And a prominent figure in this documentary is a journalist that is covering this case. He puts it very clearly that he does not fact check because he's worried that if he posts it that much later, someone else is going to um, get their story out before him. And that is a big problem that I see with media nowadays. There is not a lot of fact checking going on. Um, some articles aren't even really clear about where these facts are coming from. I do see some that are very clear and they're very good, even if they are citing other news sources. And I think that there has to be an authenticity, there has to be a level of responsibility to that part of the process. Journalism is not supposed to be just an open editorial where, you know, basically he is accusing people of being able to write off journalists by just simply claiming that they're biased and, you know, my beliefs are different than yours and I don't have to believe what you believe. Well, if you're doing your job of journalism properly, you are citing sources. Now, granted, there are some people that are just not going to agree with you. They're not going to look at your sources and that's that. But for the people that are interested in truly finding the truth, and we are out here, we will dive into those sources. We will double check those facts along with you. I mean, it's weird because I feel like I'm talking about the whole premise for my channel. This is why I show you guys so much of the screen. This is why I go through my research with you. And I might get things wrong here or there. That's part of this game. That is certainly a part of journalism. Um, but I believe that Wesley thinks that 
there is a bit of um, this kind of impeachment mentality going on here where, oh, if you find one thing wrong, all of a sudden you write off that whole journalist or you write off that whole publication or something like that. I think that's a bit simplistic. I think most of us are a bit more mature than that. We can handle, hey, you know, they got this fact wrong. It was really early in the story, but they corrected it in their follow-up story. They noted they got it wrong. You know, this is a modern age. You can update your stories. And some um, mainstream media sources are very good about that. And when they do that, they should always put it in the footnotes. Hey, we changed this story four hours ago. We added this fact. We previously said that. There are ways to be extremely clear with journalism. And all of that leads to a comfort level for the consumer, for you, for the person that's reviewing it. Because you know, if nothing else, even if they've got the story completely wrong, they are trying. They are trying to be as transparent with you as possible about where the information is coming from, how they are assessing it, and how they're relaying it to you. And if those pieces are in play, I believe journalism works perfectly fine. In, in a world in which the truth is unknowable, how do we make governing decisions? And then also, how do we hold people accountable? Okay, now I think here I'm getting a little hint, um, and the written article that goes with this video also alludes to this a little bit as well. Um, he's kind of speaking about Donald Trump here, and he's not being very clear about that. Uh, there have been several things that came out during the campaign. Donald Trump said this, Donald Trump said that, Donald Trump comes out and he says, no, I didn't, and then all of a sudden someone pulls out tapes from Howard Stern 20 years ago, and they go, yeah, you did, here they are, and they play the tapes. Um, there is certainly something that is important in that, but I don't think that believing that all of the country is uh, in that same mindset of just disregarding that type of information is necessarily true. Um, I also think that there's a flip side to this where that information needs to be, needs to be scrutinized a little bit. For example, in the example I gave you about tapes that came from Howard Stern, um, Howard Stern has even talked himself about some of the comments that Donald Trump made on his channel. And his point of view is that, hey, Donald comes on my show, he knows it's a comedy show, he knows we're raunchy, and he does some of that stuff. Some of this stuff is bits. Even Howard didn't believe that that necessarily was reflecting the truth of what Donald would put out into the world as being himself. He thought he was playing up for the microphone. Um, we know that this is a guy that uh, knows how to attract attention like that. I mean, check out his Twitter account. Uh, look at The Apprentice. Just look at how he handled himself on The Apprentice. So it's interesting. I really wish that Wesley would give us some better details here. Once again, the things that I look for, what are your sources? What exactly are you trying to talk about in this instance? But even here, he's kind of glossing away from his main point and just trying to encapsulate it in this overarching theory. It's difficult. I mean, I, I don't think that there's any coincidence in the fact that our press freedoms are one of the first things that our founders enshrined in our Constitution. I have to agree with Wesley that, uh, of course, the freedom of speech is fundamental. Of course, we need that in order to have a strong country that does uh, is self-aware, essentially. I mean, that's kind of what he's dancing around here. If the, if the press isn't there to speak freely, they're not going to be able to tell all the rest of us about what is going on in some of these cases. Um, that is certainly a risky proposition. But do we feel like the, fre like the press is currently free and that they're already able to do that? I personally don't. I feel like it has been a long time since I've heard of a renegade journalist working within a mainstream media corporation able to express their own opinion. This weird little thing tickled in the back of my brain about what type of media is truly changing things currently. Um, first of all, when we look at things like people being shot by police officers, um, who's breaking those stories? It's not journalists. It's regular citizens like you and me. It's people with cell phone cameras that all of a sudden are at the spot smart enough to fire up their camera, get the footage, and then put it somewhere where people can notice it. And that is effectively, um, I think that's removing some of the functionality of what journalism is supposed to be, breaking the actual story, being the first on the scene to report the facts back. Um, technology has kind of moved that way forward, and now you and I can be the person that's breaking the story. So that is certainly a ding. Uh, against traditional journalism. 
Uh, is traditional journalism supposed to move from this point into being more about commentary on those things? Because if you can't be there to break the story, you at least have to relay it. I don't know. That's kind of where I feel like I'm at. That's kind of where I feel like uh, a YouTube channel like the Young Turks is at. Um, you know, they're largely just reviewing other media stories and then giving their perspective on it. And it is refreshing because typically those mainstream media stories are written with a particular slant in some way. And if someone like the Young Turks uh, takes a look at that story and hits it from a different slant or a little bit of critical analysis, all of a sudden we have a decent conversation going. But still, even that is a mechanic of what I was talking about before, the search for truth. You know that if they're looking at information that leans away from their beliefs and they bring in their beliefs, somewhere between those two <laughs> tugging forces, in the middle, we might find the critical absolute truth, which is in there somewhere. And I think that that's what we face now, is, is the potential of having our press so undermined uh, that it can no longer be a safeguard of our democracy. I think that's long done. I think that is a fight way past due. Um, mainstream media is not going to be the format to be the watchdog anymore. Uh, it's, it, it's impossible because of how they're paid, because of how the organizations that they work within are run, um, and because of the connections between those organizations and the government. That, that f I think it's a bit of a fallacy that he thinks that that is a recent development. I believe that happened decades ago. And we know that the government has been playing with mainstream media since at least, I think, the 1950s was when Operation Mockingbird was going on. Um, that's, that's not how any of this gets fixed. How does it get addressed? I think is like this. I think it is um, people talking to each other on a different level, in a different format, with different expectations. I am not working for some big entity where I have five bosses above me and all of their viewpoints have to coincide with my story or that thing doesn't get shown. I can pretty much fire up my camera, post it direct to YouTube, regardless of anyone agreeing with my opinion or not. I might, I might suffer some repercussions from that. For example, if I put something out there that YouTube doesn't like, they might remove my monetization. Yes, I've had that happen many times, but that doesn't stop me from being able to still communicate. That doesn't stop me from still reaching you and you coming to the conclusion of, hey, look, this guy is trying to find the truth in this big mess of information. We saw this in Ferguson. We saw, because um, we love, as a society, as a culture, to attack messengers. Yes, we do want to shoot the messenger because these guys are not doing their jobs correctly. If they would, they would be going to their bosses saying, hey, we're doing all this frivolous crap, we're getting all emotional and yelling at people. What about journalism? What about reporting these facts accurately? What about fact checking these things, finding sources, getting expert opinions, bringing all that instead of just hey, we've got our experts, they're the same guys that agree with us like always, let's go ahead and get them together in a room and we'll all pat each other on the back. I just thank God that we have this type of social media where people can get together, be critical, have tough conversations with each other, and move away from this one-sided dialogue of mainstream media that is only about echoing and back patting the same feelings, thoughts, and words that others have that happen to line up in your camp. That is what's killing journalism, at least in my perspective. But what do you guys think? This is where I turn it over to you and you can share your thoughts. Don't you love YouTube? I think this is a big part of the future of journalism. I know even CNN tried with their iReport program. I actually did a couple of reports on that uh, system a couple years ago. It didn't really take off, but I do think at some point uh, maybe with this whole Casey Neistat acquisition, I don't know if you guys know, but he was just bought by CNN basically. Um, I think at some point, one of these mainstream media companies can build a system kind of like YouTube, and as long as they don't meddle with the messages that are put out there and they don't find ways to try to curb messages or delete them, if they leave it a true open speech platform, that is going to be the mainstream media that is going to take off with the new version of the news, the new way that news is going to be disseminated instead of the traditional blah, 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 one side, I can't hear you guys, here's my thoughts, blah, 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 blah. Wow, longest Johnny vlogs ever.
Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great day and I'll catch you on the next show on the Lord and Arts channel.